Hello and welcome to episode 2. In this episode I'm going to compare John of Gaunt to Tywin Lannister. John of Gaunt is the focus of much Shakespeare and is a very a hugely influential character in English medieval history. So John of Gaunt was born for, in 1340 and he lived till 1399. He was the son of a king, the father of a king, the grandfather of a king, the great-grandfather of a king, and the great-great-great-grandfather of a king, but never a king himself. He married into a wealthy family and founded the House of Lancaster. Although he never enjoyed the outstanding military success of his brother the Black Prince, his best years would come in France during the Hundred Years' War. This was the war to assert his father's claim to the French crown. The Hundred Years' War lasted for around a hundred years, as the name suggests, and was ultimately unsuccessful. The turmoil that it left actually started a civil war in England known as the Wars of the Roses. So from his return from France in 1374, from then until 1377, John of Gaunt was the head of the English government. This was because his brother and father were quite ill and couldn't rule themselves. Although never a king of England, John of Gaunt did look to claim the kingship of Castile. He was given the dukedom of Aquitaine by his father and he sought to expand his territory in the region. And even so much so, he made other English lords refer to him as my lord Spain. Um, but this venture was ultimately unsuccessful and he returned with no crown and in faith. This reminds me a little bit of Daemon Targaryen, any of the book fans will know. He was the wife of a queen, the son of a king, the father of two kings, but never a king himself. And in desperation, tried to build a kingdom in the Stepstones, uh, but ended up having to give it up to his brother, who, who was the actual king of Westeros at the time. But back to John, he had to settle for being Lord Protector of England to... Edward the Black Prince's son, Richard II. Now, Richard would form a big inspiration to another character in the Game of Thrones universe, which I will discuss later. But for now, let's compare John of Gaunt and Tywin Lannister. Both men were partial to lavish displays of wealth, which often alienated them from the common people. Uh, they were also alienated from the common people because they sought to uphold the rights of the aristocracy. If we just take a look at the banners here, you can obviously see the massive influences that House Lancaster has had on George R. R. Martin's House Lannister. The lion, the red, uh, the royal banners, it's, it's clearly very similar and obviously the name is it's practically the same. Both men, John and Tywin, would also have a lot to prove when they started their political careers. John was the third son of Edward III. And because of this, he didn't really inherit much wealth um, in that respect. A lot of the, the crown's wealth would go to the Black Prince. So he did, however, marry very smartly. He married the daughter of the wealthiest man in the kingdom, and John would actually inherit this fortune, which was a bit of a double-edged sword, really. I'm all up for a power couple, but in the medieval times, to rely on your wife's wealth for influence and fortune... Um, was not really seen as you know a great thing to do and led to a lot of people turning their nose up at John. Tywin too had a lot to overcome. His father Titus was not a very good leader in the Westerlands, so much so that House Rain rebelled and when Tywin was a young man House Rain rebelled against House Lannister to assert their own dominance over the Westerlands but Tywin eventually put this down, and Tywin was so brutal in doing this, they made a song called The Reigns of Castamir. Now, The Reigns of Castamir was played at the Red Wedding when Rob Stark was killed by the Lannisters. It's basically their theme tune. Whenever they're about to, you know, kill one of their enemies, the Lannisters drop this song, and, and you know, it's quite a fearful song in the, for anyone who's facing the Lannisters. They were both quite similar, John and Tywin, in the fact they were very good at what they did. Both ruled without a crown on their heads, and this was a difficult thing to do in the, the world that these guys lived in. They had to be very politically savvy and know what they were doing in order to survive and rule uh, without being officially the king. However, what John has over Ty Tywin is 
something very important to Tywin. Tywin in the show talks a lot about dynasty and he wants his family name to live on for a thousand years. He's also disappointed in Jamie and um, Tyrion and Cersei for not being on board with this dynasty as much as he is. John's di- John's dynasty is something to behold. He was the father of a king, the grandfather of a king, the great grandfather of a king, and through another wife, through that line, it was a it was a bastard line. Uh, children born out of wedlock, but they were legitimised, and through that line came the House of Tudor. So you can see there Henry the Seventh and Henry the Eighth. Anyone who's done a bit of Key Stage One history will know who Henry the Eighth is, and they will know his children, Edward the Sixth, Bloody Mary, Elizabeth the First. They all came from the line of John of Gaunt. So he has a massive influence on on the British medieval history, English medieval history. So that's it for this week. Join me next time when I will be discussing Richard II and his comparisons to this guy, Joffrey Baratheon, the most hated man in Game of Thrones. If you want to learn more about the man behind Joffrey, the real man behind Joffrey, join me next time.